Welcome back to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am pleased and honored to have our guest on to the show today. And I am pleased and actually honored to be the first person to officially congratulate her uh, as of recording this. Uh, Jennifer uh, Jenny, I apologize, Jen, uh, Jenny uh, Jer- Jeremy has just been confirmed as the next candidate for the Alberta party in the riding of Calgary Northwest. Jenny, congratulations and welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Chris. I'm super excited to be the nominee for the Cal- or for Alberta party in Calgary Northwest. And thank you so much for having me on your show. Well, we have a lot to digest and a lot to talk about over the next 45 minutes, but I want to start with the same question I've asked every political person who has ever come on this show. You're no exception, Jenny. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Yeah, I love this question. So I would say I've always been a very purposeful person. So I've been somebody who's always tried to seek, um, you know, treat people as best as I possibly can and think of what's best, not only for me, but for those that I have the privilege of, of being around. But I would say I would stem my, my duty to, to serve um, from my time working for a woman by the name of Suzanne West at a company called Black Shower Energy back in 2012. Um, Black Shower, Suzanne was running as a flat organization. So she was seeking um, a space where there could be leadership without authority. And within the first couple of months of my being there, um, she, she, there was something she had decided and I disagreed with. So I took the opportunity to pull her aside and we had a private conversation around it. And during that, she stopped me and said, you realize you're holding yourself back, right? And I looked at her puzzled and she said, you know, leadership is a choice. It's not, it's not a, um, it's not a position. And she said, you know, you make a lot of excuses as to why you're not leading something, you know, like I was putting, putting the expectation on her in terms of her, her title and her ability to lead. And so from that point on, I, I realized she was right. I could be doing more to serve others around me by, by taking on that leadership role. And so I started doing so. And and I would say, you know, one thing that my my partner um, says to me is, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Once you're somebody who cares, you can't stop caring. And so that's that's something that I got from that experience. And also, I figured out my style, my leadership style at that time. So I'm definitely a direct leader. I like to look for um, facts and from the people closest to the data so that I can understand what's best and then bridge gaps between between. Um, groups that need to be bridged. I'm not afraid to have the conversations that need to be had. And um, yeah, so going on with Suzanne to build Imaginea Energy, I'll just offer that's really where my win-win mentality came from. It was a company that was intending to um, be both fiscally responsible and socially um, progressive. And um, so yeah, that was the the birth of my win-win mindset. You can give back and you can serve in many different aspects, whether it be nonprofit organizations, whether it be through a leadership style. In 2022, as of this recording, you are officially serving and putting your name forward to serve in the political realm. Take me through the process of actually deciding that 2023, the next general election in the province of Alberta, would be the election that you would put your name forward in. Yeah. Uh, so I've, I've never been one to ignore, um, the synchronicities in life. So I would say, uh, so I had, you know, the opportunity to, to hear both Barry Morishita and Carrie Kendall speak in the spring. And it was like hearing myself speak again with the same sort of abundant mindset, trying to seek win-win solutions and in their thinking in terms of social progressive, progressiveness and fiscal responsibility. And, you know, it was like hearing myself, but, you know, more articulate and more matter of fact. And so that was, I would say, step one. Um, I would say the next thing is, is again, I did a lot of work in the month of July looking at the the party platform and and understanding Barry's message clearly. And I just kept hearing the right message at the right time. You know, these are, we're in a place where um, we need to talk about policies and not parties. and it's it's too important. So I would say that's a big part of it is I feel like our problems are too important, too impactful, too significant to not take a step into the ring. And, and I would say specifically for myself, 
I had the opportunity over the last two years to um, influence improvements to the um, policies and regulations around liability within the energy space. And having that opportunity, I could see a tremendous opportunity for improvements for collaboration. And, um, and I want to take my knowledge of that learning experience and apply it more broadly. I know that I can have um, a real impact on the people in Calgary Northwest and Alberta because I appreciate the problems we're facing are not limited to just this province. Um, we need to think about the impact of our industry on, on the world. And I want to I want to help us have a legacy that we can be proud of. So what was the issue? What was the issue for you that that was the catalyst? Because you can look back on your uh, life and your time before getting involved in politics and starting this process to become the candidate, but there had to be the tipping point. There had to be that one issue that you went, okay, enough's enough. I need to put my name forward. You talked about the platform with uh, Barry, the leader, uh, Barry Morishita, the leader of the Alberta Party. You talked about uh, Calgary Elbows candidate, Kerry Kundal. But for you, personally what was that issue that you said okay enough's enough it's time i i i see what's happening in this province and i i'm sick and tired and i need to fix it the way that i know how to yes thank you for that i i would say the the one thing i've i've noticed since since i've you know decided to be to be a leader decided to be someone who feels dutiful on the on the behalf of others is is i would say Knowing that I have some um, important uh, skills to bring to the table that I don't see in place in our leaders. Um, and I would, you know, one thing like, you know, I mentioned that I went over, um, you know, Barry's sort of messaging and, and the Alberta Party messaging. I also have done some soul searching of my own over the last couple months in the summer here. And I, I managed to get a hold of a book called The Sum of Us by Heather McGee. And she talks about the, the, the importance of a win-win mindset and the data, how the data supports that, you know, thinking what's best for everyone really does help everyone, not only today, but in the future. And so for me, it's, you know, knowing that I have this innate ability to be able to, you know, put my own personal um, benefit aside and do what's best for everyone is something that I want to see in the leadership that I'm not seeing. I don't feel like I'm being represented. And I feel like I am somebody that brings a valuable perspective to the political landscape that's much needed. What are those values that you represent that you don't find that this current leadership crop, whether it be the NDP, whether it be the uh, UCP? And I know you said in your uh, in the interview so far, you want to get away from dealing with party issues and more dealing with the issues that are affecting us day to day. But we have to talk about party issues to talk about the day to day issues as well. So what are those values that you bring to the table that you see are lacking right now? You talk about leadership, but there must be other qualities, whether it be transparency, accountability, whether it be communications with your residents, because you are in Calgary Northwest, which is the riding held by UCP MLA. The Minister of Energy, Sonia Savage, is your MLA. So you are challenging her on this values game. So what are the values that you hold that she may not hold? Yeah, you absolutely touched on it, which is accountability and collaboration. Those are two of the things that I will bring to the table. Um, the, the piece that I see, the, the opportunity that I see is we can solve some problems very quickly um, if we are willing to do just that. What I'm seeing in the political landscape right now is this pointing fingers, pointing blame across party boundaries rather than appreciating that our problems are bigger than that, we need to argue to progress. We don't need to argue to prove somebody wrong because we all have a valuable perspective that needs to be heard. Um, I can use a specific example um, that can help. So, you know, I look at this incident that happened with Christopher Freeland recently, and I can say right now, I'm, I'm, I have a tremendous respect for Krista Freeland. Um, and I look at the way that that incident was handled and I have seen myself do just that, you know, in, in nervous anxiousness to sort of just giggle and, and escape 
um, a, a potentially dangerous situation. But when I think of who I am and what I want to bring to this process, I would hope that we could stop and ask somebody who's willing to take time out of their day to go and speak to Christopher Freeland why he feels so passionately about this problem. What have you experienced that we need to know, that we need to hear? And I think that's really honestly where what I want to bring to this process. And I can say that I've had that opportunity at the doorsteps already with, with people that I've spoken to, um, to be able to have these dialogues. I think that's what I, I want to make sure. Again, my goal in this process is going to be to hold myself and others accountable to just that, that we have to argue to get to a better place for all of our partners. How do, how do you do that, though? Because you, you and I will both agree, I think, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth here, Jenny, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something that I, I'm happy for you to challenge me on. But our political discourse in this country, in this province, is very, very angry right now. People are angry one at each other. You want to rise above that. So how do you do that? What's the, what's the conversation that needs to be happening right now? Is it calling up the person who confronted Christia Freeland in Grand Prairie and saying, why? What, 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 what's, your, what's your issue? Let's try to address these issues and that, let's not feel like we need to throw the F-bomb or tell people you're a traitor to our country because you don't like their politics. What is it that you can do from your background or your experience through leadership that makes you the best person to start that conversation, to start taming down that rhetoric and start having conversations about the issues that are important to the people of Alberta, but also to the people important to the, the issues important to the people of Calgary Northwest? Yeah, no, great question. So I have, um, so I'm a geophysicist, as I think I've mentioned. And one of the sort of principles that we, that we know from our, from our scientific background is that every, there's a, the law of continuity. And so one way there's an example of that is when you look at a rainbow. Um, so when you see a, a, a color repeat on a rainbow, it shows us that the spectrum wraps. So right now what we have is we have people that are arguing that they're left or right. And God forbid we talk to you because you're left or God forbid we speak to you because you're right. And the truth of the matter is the spectrum wraps. The further right you go, suddenly you're left. And the further left you go, suddenly you're right. So what that tells me is that we are all in this together. We are all part of the solution. And so what I will bring to the table is appreciating that everybody has a valuable perspective to be heard. And anybody willing to speak, especially passionately on any of these issues, there are conversations to be had. And that's, to me, when I hear somebody come at me with something, anything, I always first now from my, from my time with Suzanne and, and, and onwards, I think, wow, they care enough to talk to me about this issue. They care enough to be here and to be speaking about it. And I, I can offer, you know, like I mentioned, my husband's on the fire department. And I have many conversations with, like, I have the privilege of having one foot in the industry and one foot outside of the industry. And I see the same issues that they're facing that what I'm facing in my, in my industry. And they can challenge me on my biases and I can challenge them on theirs. And that's something I, you know, it's like a muscle that I constantly work. And it's something that I... A strive to always be a part of like I, I have a sign here that says at best we're human right and to me it's it's a reminder to me that we're we're all part of this this the solution to to all of these problems that are that are that are our problems these aren't you know these aren't conservative problems these aren't NDP problems these are Alberta's problems and I, I appreciate you saying that. And this is where this show kind of sparked from, because we'll, we'll have anyone from any political party on the show who wants to have sit down and have an honest to goodness conversation. It's just a conversation. And I feel like we have gotten far away from where we used to do politics. And it was actually about conversations instead of the 140 or 240 tweet. Um, but 
I could go on that for an hour and I want to turn to issues because you are running for the, uh, well, you're not running anymore. You are the candidate for the Alberta party in the riding of Calgary Northwest. Now you've said in this interview so far that you've been at the doors. You've been on the doorsteps, knocking, hearing from the people of Calgary Northwest. What are these issues that are facing the people of Calgary Northwest right now that you've heard about? And then we'll dive into some of the topics a little bit later. Okay, yeah. So I would say the, the main, I've boiled it down to kind of three things that I'm hearing consistently, which is affordability, healthcare, and education. And if you want to think of that more long term, I would call that energy security, a robust workforce, and quality of life. Um, so speaking about affordability, so I mean, obviously we're seeing issues in terms of the pressure on people's pocketbooks um, at, the, at, the, at the grocery store, at the gas station, et cetera. Um, but what we're also seeing is a strain on our resources. So you know, obviously with respect to supply chain issues, um, we're seeing in many industries, uh, our healthcare industry, for example, and then um, the strain of or not having enough workforce. We're seeing not only people just not available, but also people leaving the workforce because of potentially um, value issues, right? Um, so, so that challenge, I see an opportunity for myself to bring my passion into that in, and my problem solving skills into that space. Um, I see, like I, I think I've mentioned here already, an opportunity to drop costs in, in the liability space, for example just by simply working together, by sharing resources and by um, uh, you know, working collaboratively, not only just within our industry, but even outside of our industry with our stakeholders, for example. Um, are, are, people for open, health, are people open to having these conversations? Because in, in this world of so much negativity, people are, are apprehensive to open up about issues that they're facing because it may seem like they're weak. And when politicians are at the door, are you finding people are wanting to talk about these issues because they're not hearing it from the other parties or they're not seeing the other candidates at the door and you're the first politician that will walk up to them and say, hey, what's on your mind? Let's have this conversation. Yeah, so I would say I've been pleasantly surprised by the amount of conversation I've had at the door. Um, and I, you know, again, like, as I mentioned to you, I'm not expecting everybody I need to be, you know, ready to join the Alberta party revolution, you know? So, um, so I would say one of the first conversations I had was somebody who said, yeah, I'm just, I'm voting conservative. And I said, okay, you know, may I ask why? And uh, he said, oh, well, you know, it's the party I vote for and sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad. And he started <laughs> to laugh. And, and I said, okay, well, you know, hopefully here's my information. Hopefully you'll consider the Alberta party. And, you know, so I think just give, having people the opportunity to sort of do some reflection. Um, I had uh, one, one per, a couple that had voted for the Alberta party in the past and they offered, you know, some information they knew that I wasn't aware of. And so I'm, you know, I'm better served from, from their discussion with them and, and you know, their continued support. Um, I had a great conversation with a man who was a retired um, social studies teacher. Um, and I offered that the Alberta party's focus is on financial literacy. And he said, you know, he felt his students got more financial literacy training in his social studies class than they did in career and life management. And he said he's 100% supportive of of, um, and actually, he had even mentioned he was planning on voting NDP. Um, by the time we ended that conversation, I might have persuaded him otherwise. Um, he offered that there are it's a massive um, discrepancy of class sizes across the city. And one thing both I'm sure you learned as well as I did during the pandemic is we have a number of families that don't have access to resources that their children require. So at the same time, we're talking about a lack of a skilled workforce yet we're not empowering our students to be able to supply that workforce for Albertans. So again, these problems are bigger than just one party. And the other thing I've, I've really had tremendous response from at the door is I've talked about this pendulum swing. So, you know, we've seen it in the last two elections. We have this NDP government that came in and made significant changes in our policies. And now we've had that being shifted in a totally different direction over the last three and a half years. 
And my concern and part of one of the fundamental reasons why I'm running is we don't, we can't afford that. We can't afford to just argue with each other. We have to be able to argue to agree, argue to progress. And so I, I would say I'm, I'm optimistic from what I'm hearing at the doors. I'm, I'm, oh, I had one, I had one conversation with a guy who I thought went terribly. Like um, we argued, it felt like we argued, there was no yelling, but it was a lot of discussion about, oh, the Alberta party is too socialist for me. Okay, well, give me some examples. Well, how do you feel about unions? I said, I'm very supportive of unions. I'm a part of a union as a professional geophysicist. And my husband, who's a city firefighter, is also part of a union. I asked him, how do unions negatively impact you? He didn't have an answer. But then to your point about what is what are what is the response to um, shared sharing resources? I think that's when you sort of um, interjected. I said, you know, we should be sharing resources. We should be, you know, across companies, we should be working together to use services so that we get, you know, better costs, better work done, blah, blah, blah. And he said, so where you're going to force people to do it, the Alberta party. And I said, no, you're absolutely right. There's no such thing as forcing. We let the market dictate what's best. And that's what we're experiencing is the pressure in the market telling us we have to share resources. So, you know, I have, um, I have a lot of excitement about, about the opportunity that I'm hearing at the doors and I'm looking forward to hearing more. Have you been surprised at the engagement? We can talk about the issues. We're going to talk about the issues as well, but have you been surprised about the issues that people are willing to talk about? Like uh, you talk about market access, you talk about affordability, you talked about healthcare, but I, I've had politicians from all different levels of government uh, sit down with me and say they knock on doors and they want to talk about garbage. They want to talk about defense spending. And it's like, well, that's not my level of government. Are people engaged in politics in the Calgary Northwest area? Because I, I always find it fascinating when people knock on doors and they hear things that they weren't expecting from their level of government that they're trying to run for or are part of. Are you finding that people understand the issues that are putting, uh, that are facing Alberta right now? Yeah, like it's, it's funny you should say that because I had a, con I had a great conversation with this gentleman that was from Toronto at a, at a event that I was helping support the Alberta party in. And he was saying, you know, um, nobody wants to talk about energy security. They, you know, it's affordability. And yet I'm at the door and people are asking me, tell me that it makes sense to bring in windmills and solar panels into this province. So, and this was from a grandma um, looking after two kids. So, you know, I think people are very much engaged. Now, that being said, I am still surprised by some of the lack of engagement that I've seen too, you know, like there are some doors where people just say, I don't even want to get involved in, in politics, which which I'm, I'm quite surprised by, you know, because I think like, you know, but that being said, five years ago, would I think I'd be running for the Alberta party? No. So who knows where people are headed, right? But yeah, I would say I'm really, I'm, I'm impressed and um, happy to hear how knowledgeable and how engaged people are. And, and I don't want to, sorry, I just want to back up to that grandma's question. You know, she asked the right question. We need to understand the life cycle of the energy resources that we were both generating, using, and selling. So she asked the right question, you know, and that's what I'm excited by. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. I want to turn to healthcare because I'm just cautious of time here and we're just trying to make sure that we keep on top of things. Healthcare, healthcare, healthcare. Um, our healthcare system is overloaded right now. We are seeing uh, nurses and doctors burn out because of the stress that they're under. We are seeing wait times through the roof. I think at the Peter Lougheed, which is the uh, closest hospital to myself, there's usually about a, a 10 to 14 hour wait time uh, to go into the emergency room. Um, healthcare is a big issue. As you said, it's one of the top three issues that you're hearing at the door. What concerns are people saying to you around healthcare and how do you plan to address it? 
Yeah, so I think one one of the things that you mentioned I'm hearing a lot is wait times, right? So there's a lot of a lot of people I've heard at the door that are saying, what is the Alberta party going to do with respect to wait times? So I can offer that I've had a discussion with um, a doctor in, in Calgary Northwest that says similar to my discussion around um, cutting costs and sharing resources, he sees the same opportunity within the healthcare space to do the same. So I would say that the, the Alberta party, one of the fundamental principles we have, we hold, is that healthcare needs to, main, need to, needs to maintain, or sorry, we need to maintain that healthcare is a necessity of all Albertans. And we need to look at these um, potential sources of, of shared resources or gaps between the systems to eliminate some of the, um, the, the wait times, the cost, et cetera. But so that it begins with empowering people that have come into this province that have skills that we're not able to utilize um, with the current policies that we have in place. It includes um, increasing um, more education, um, sorry, more, more spaces in education to um, accommodate the, the needs and, and empowering other um, disciplines such as nurse prant practitioners and pharmacists so that we can alleviate some of the strain on those central systems that we hold. Um, the last subject that I want to talk about is affordability. And you mentioned affordability goes hand in hand with development resource development. Now, as someone who has a background in resource development, I feel like this is a easy topic that you can discuss. So that's why we left it to the end. But um, I, I'm going to pose a few questions that I know there's a lot of people yelling at their screens right now or yelling at their car radio listening to this on the deer foot. Um, what's your position on our uh, natural resource uh, sector right now? Do you believe that the oil and gas industry has a future to play within the province of Alberta? Because I'm yes, assuming you've absolutely. heard that exact question at the door at least once in your time out there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Oil and gas has an important role to play. I think we're in a place where we are going to need every source of energy that we have available to us. Um, I do think, however, that again, as I mentioned earlier, we have to think about the life cycle of our industry. So, so what do you mean by that? Sorry, I'm going to I'm going to jump in here. Yeah. And I do apologize. What do you mean by the life cycle? Because I'm hearing life cycle and I'm saying, well, as long as there's oil in the ground, I'm going to dig like Alberta seems like it wants to dig it out as much as possible. Are you talking about green energy life cycle? Are you talking about the environmental impact life cycle? Just f f f uh, flesh that out a little bit for myself and my listeners, because I'm a little bit uh, confused on that topic. Yeah, no, thank you for that question. Um, yeah, so to me, it's 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 what you're describing. So it's it's looking at the cost and impact of developing an energy resource from its infancy all the way to its retirement. So it's it's appreciating, for example, you know, like as I mentioned, that woman at the door asked me, is does it make sense to bring in solar panels from China in Alberta? And so we need to look at what what are the what does it require to generate those solar those solar panels? What does it require to transport those solar panels? How long do they last? What happens to them once they're done? And how do we how do we reuse them if there is that ability to do so? And the same thing needs to be done in our oil industry as well, oil and gas industry as well, and as well as for wind. Or for water generate water, um, sorry, hydro or nuclear for that matter. We have to appreciate the impact of all of these energy sources and try to limit them as much as possible. So again, and that's not limited to just emissions. That's talking about land, water, and air in each of those capacities. No, and I appreciate your clarification on that. I was just I was a little confused, and I just I know there's probably if I'm confused, there's at least one other person confused. I hope so. If not, that I feel really stupid no, right now. But um, we we are a natural resource province. It is one of our major industries. Um, while Calgary Northwest is not the downtown, I want to talk about Calgary as a whole right now, and that is we are we have seen the downtown core 
a lot of businesses leave, move to different countries or different uh, provinces. Um, our natural resource sector goes hand in hand with uh, bringing businesses and communities back, whether that be green energy, green resources, or the oil and gas industry. Um, does the Alberta Party or do you plan to address the need to bring businesses into the province of Alberta to address the uh, work issue, whether it be jobs for people in the energy industry who are looking for jobs right now? Because I know the last few years during COVID-19, uh, the energy industry wasn't hit as hard, but it did still get hit. Is there a platform or are you planning to help address that? if elected as MLA to ensure that good jobs come back to the city, but also good jobs come back to the province in the energy sector. Yeah, so again, I'm going to focus on, on my perspective, my, my experience. Um, I see a tremendous future for um, professionals and contributors to the energy sector with respect to um, the, the cleanup of, of sites with respect to, like I say, this life cycle management um, approach. I'll be specific to my discipline, which is geophysics. One of the you know, expectations of, of our industry, and when we talk about market pressure, one of them is that, we, that our investors want socially responsible um, activity, right? So we've seen that with now this push for net zero in our industry. So what that requires is for us to inject CO2 into formations um, that we what we have an image. So guess what? That means people like myself who have who have you know the skills to um, to interpret the images that we need to understand containment of these of these um, emissions, that's a vital job that's going to be needed going forward. So I don't see our energy sector the people within the energy sector not having a future in this province. I see us, as long as we're willing to embrace the, um, you know, this, that we need to align our values with um, the expectation in terms of our investors, I think we're going to have a tremendous success in this province and, and our energy industry will carry forward in this, um, in this new space, in this transition. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Nope, that's me. That's me. That was me. I I, I had to cough and then I, I muted it for a second and I forgot to unmute okay. it. But I want to turn to a, another subject here for a quick second because I know we're cautious of time and I want to make sure that we try and get in as many questions as possible before the end of this episode. And I want to turn to life as an MLA. You will be elected, and I'm going to say this with all due respect to anyone who's running for politics, you will not be acclaimed. <laughs> you will have votes against you. As the Alberta Party, as the next MLA for Calgary Northwest, how do you envision yourself representing all residents of your riding and not just the ones that vote for you? Because I have heard time and time again from Calgarians, from Albertans, from Canadians that we elect a government and we don't hear from them until the next election. And if we do hear from them, it's only the people that they want to hear from and not the people that oppose them. While you talked about it a little bit beforehand, I want to go in more depth. What is your plan as the next MLA to address all issues and not just the people who vote for the Alberta party? Yeah, I, again, I think it's a wonderful question. And I hope that this response is, is in, in all of those that have the opportunity to be elected. To me, again, I go back to our problems are bigger than the people that vote for us. Our problems are all of our problems. And I appreciate anybody who's willing to talk to me, whether it be they agree with me or not, because at the end of the day, I get smarter, they get smarter, we all get better together. And I think that's where we're at. When I talked about the spectrum earlier and, and the rainbow, we need to come together. That's ultimately what that tells us is that we can't, we can't ignore each other and expect to make progress in this province. We have to be willing to listen to those that oppose us, especially um, because to me, that's how I, I have blind spots. Everybody has blind spots. I'm, I, like I said, I'm a best human. Um, so in order for me to be smarter for everyone, I need to listen to those that disagree with me. And I, so I, my plan specifically is to make sure that I address everybody who, who comes forward to me with, 
with any issue that they feel that they've been hurt and that I have um, stayed to my word, which is that I'm here to represent them and I want to make sure they feel represented. Now, to piggyback on that question, because this is another important issue and I'm gonna, it's going to be a long-winded question, so just bear with me here for a second. That's great. That's great that you're going to listen to everyone. Now, the role of the elected official as MLA is not to vote for the what your beliefs are. It's the, to vote for what your constituents want. Now, there will be some votes in the Legislative Assembly that you believe is right, but the majority of your constituents believe is wrong. While the Alberta Party and uh, leader Barry Morishita has said there will be no whipped votes in his caucus, so there will be free votes on all these issues, how do you balance the needs of what you believe is right compared to what your constituents believe is right? Yeah, so I, I'll go back to a, a great question that I was asked before, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but it was how do you remain genuine? How do you stay true to yourself? And I would say, if I go back to my win-win thinking, is really what's going to help me stay true to myself here. I, I have, I, anybody who knows me knows that I will speak my truth, whether it's popular or not, right? Um, I don't have, and again, I will say it because I think it's important, but then I'm, I'm able to acknowledge when there's a majority of people that disagree with me and and you know, there's enough data to suggest that this is something for me to let go, right? There's not um, every hill to die on, but some of them I will be willing to speak when when it's necessary. I can make that promise today because I know it's just the way I am as a person because I feel very strongly about doing what's right for everyone, not just for those that vote for me, not just for my party, what's right for everyone. And I appreciate your honesty on that because I, I, I love asking that question because it makes politicians or candidates to be politicians really think because uh, it, far too often you always do what you believe is right and you sometimes forget who your constituents are. But like you said, if you're genuine and you say it's a hill that I'm willing to die on, then here we are, right? And I, I appreciate you being honest and being genuine about that answer. Um, we could talk for another hour about policies. We could talk for another hour on other issues, but um, I want people to connect with you. I want people to connect with you and reach out to you and ask these questions themselves because that's how a democracy works. I'm not telling you to go vote. I'm just telling you to reach out and get informed. Um, Jenny, how can they do that? How can people reach out, learn about you, ask the question if they're listening to this in Calgary Northwest and say, hey, I have an event that I want you to come to because I believe I need people to listen to you to hear what you have to say and give them the 15 minute pitch. How can they do that? Yeah, so um, I'm Jenny or Jennifer Yeremy, Y-E-R-E-M-I-Y on all social media. That's, um, well, all the ones that I'm familiar with. So. Facebook, WhatsApp, Signal, LinkedIn, Twitter, of course, by email or by phone. Um, my, my ears and, and, and phone will be ready for any, anyone willing to come forward. I have a small team together, thankfully, that I'm walking into, uh, but know that many hands make light and fun work. So if anybody's interested in, in helping um, support me or the Alberta Party, I look forward to hearing from you. And even if you disagree, I want to hear your point of view and I want to understand better where I'm, where my blind spots are. Um, for those who are listening and watching this, uh, the links to uh, Jenny's Facebook, Twitter, and uh, I want to say email address uh, will be in the show notes. Please scroll down and check it out. I don't know how to link what WhatsApp or Signal or whatever you just said, because <laughs> I feel really old right now, because when I... Yeah. When people when people start talking about TikTok, I just tune out, but you didn't say TikTok, so I didn't tune out for that one. Um, yeah. But I'm going to leave on this question. And this is, this, is, this is a take as long as you want, pause for a second, think about this question, but why should you be the next MLA for the riding of Calgary Northwest, Jenny? And whenever you're ready, go ahead and take it. Yeah, so... I believe that we are at a place where we have to make really important decisions, not only for our current state, but for our future. Um, I'm willing to do the work. I'm willing to 
listen to opposing views because I know that we have to come to a collective path forward. Um, I have tremendous passion for people and I have a knowledge set that I think is valuable in our, in, um, what do I want? <laughs> in, in the government. And I think that it would be a tremendous um, lost opportunity to not allow or to not have somebody like me to, you know, be, be truthful, be, be honest and be um, respectful in our political landscape, which is much needed right now. Jenny, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This has been an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show to talk about the issues that are important to you, but also important to the people of Calgary Northwest. And I look forward to meeting you on the campaign trail. I will come by and if you have buttons, I will steal buttons from you because anyone who knows me knows that I like buttons. So um, I will be there to grab a button from you. But Jenny, awesome. thank you so much for sitting down and doing this. Congratulations on your nomination. And I say that to anyone who's listening to this and about to send me nasty emails and call me every name under the bus that I got called earlier last week. Please don't. I'm just because she literally got nominated. Like she got the A-OK -okay the day we're recording this. So I just want to congratulate her because people who put their names forward in this type of setting is far above anything I could ever ask for anyone to do. So Jenny, you are uh, standing on the shoulders of a lot of people right now. And I thank you for putting your name forward. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate this dialogue and I'm, I'm glad you create a space where we can have that. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. So with that, I want to remind everyone, the links to Jenny's information are in the show notes. So if you're listening to this on any platform, scroll down and uh, check it out. If you're driving and listening to this, please pull over before you do that or wait till you get home and do that. If you're listening to this on YouTube or watching this on YouTube, it's in the show notes as well. And remember, as I say this before, and I said this again, get out from behind social media, go have a conversation with somebody. Take five to 10 minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our democracy. It helps our society. And it helps us be a better people. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, keep talking.